Namaste and welcome. Welcome. I am so glad to be with you for another edition of Live, Love, Engage. And I am delighted to welcome Mary Oves to the show. And I'm going to tell you all about her in just a second, but I just want to just, you know, say, hey, glad to have you here, Mary. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I'm uh, really curious to hear what you have to say uh, about the subject we're going to be talking about. So, which has to do with, well, finances. We'll, we'll, we'll start with that. But let me tell you a little bit about who Mary is and why I wanted to have her on the show. Uh, she is a college English the English professor, if I can speak today, uh, a freelance journalist of 35 years, and she's also been a widow since 2017. And when her husband died, Mary set about making a new life for herself and has spent the past four years regaling readers of her lifestyle blog about online dating, single travel, dressing for your widowed 50s and menopausal hot flashes, among other things. And with her unique brand of humor, she has bridged the gap between the grief of widowhood and the joys of reinvention. And I also forgot to mention that she's also a mom. She has three, uh, I guess, mostly grown sons, I think. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to start off today talking about, um, as I mentioned, finances. So I know um, most married couples, uh, it seems like the husband is usually in charge of finances. I know in my case, I pay the bills, but my husband kind of does the investing side of things. So I was wondering if that was the case for you. And, uh, you know, then how did you manage then having to now, of course, take full responsibility after your husband passed? When my husband was alive, he was a dialysis patient for his entire life. Um, when he proposed to me, I remember he said to me that night, I'm not going to live to be an old man. So if you're going into this with me, you have to go into it knowing that. We've always known that. Um, and, you know, he died, you know, at 54. That's young. Yeah. You know, when we're young, that doesn't sound young. Right. But when you're now, you, we know it's very young. So <clears throat> he would try throughout our marriage to get me to participate. I was a full-time teacher raising three little kids. You know, I have this much energy and that much energy for anything other than work and kids. So I usually would just, you know, kind of blow him off and maybe tomorrow. And he's like, you're going to have to know this stuff. And yeah, well, maybe tomorrow. And well, this is where the insurance is. And it almost got to um, a point where it became a, it became a point of dissension. It really started uh, bothering him that I wasn't, uh, participating more, um, in, uh, in those activities. Uh, but again, as you know, our marriage went through, I became less and less interested. So, you know, fast forward to 2017 and now here I am with a rental house, insurance, mortgage, investments, policies, tuition, student loans, you know, I was pretty much, um, you know, thrown into the into the deep part of the ocean, you know, without a paddle. So my my answer to you is it has been a very oftentimes scary, but mostly liberating um, experience. Just the things I mean, I'm when I'm reading, I'm reading about, you know, I'm re reading finance books. Um, I, I have, you know, I'm always having Zoom, you know, meetings with my financial advisor and I'm always on the phone. It's a learning process. It's not something that comes naturally to me. I'm more of the nurturer. But, you know, and my twins are 23. They do their own thing now and my other son's going to be 20. But I'll tell you. Um, what I've learned the, the person I am now, as opposed to on October 22nd, 2017, 2017, I'm not sure he'd even propose to me now. <laughs> if he met me now, I'm just a completely different person. I don't mean that in a, you know, in a, in a disrespectful way, but I've learned so much over the last four years about money and investing. And, uh, I finally got a grip on it. That's good. Well, yes. that, that brings me to my next question is 
you know, as you, as especially, you know, as, as a teacher, you know, when you're learning something, you sometimes can make mistakes. So what oh, okay. um, could you share maybe, you know, one or one or two of maybe one of the, the big mistakes you maybe made while you were trying to learn this and then, and then what you learned, you know, from that. Uh, absolutely. I think I've made so many mistakes. I'm trying to figure out which one I'm going to share. Oh boy, how many mistakes I've made. Um, I'll share one with you because it's hitting me right now. All right. And everything's working out. But when they, when they tell you to keep an emergency fund, all right, of this amount of time. And I did, I had it, but I, it wasn't big enough. So now my son's tuition, my son is all, almost has a full ride uh, to his school, but my son's tuition was due last week and I didn't have it. I have it in a 401k, but now here's the kicker, as you know, now I have to take it. Luckily it doesn't affect his scholarships and you do not get, if you take it out, if you take money out of your 401k for tuition, you do not pay a penalty but you still get taxed for it. I never understood any of this. Tax, what, 10%, what does that mean? I, why can't I use that 401k? It's my, now I get it because I was forced to get it. I had to call you know, my financial advisor and go through that with him. And he, and he says, if you put it back in 60 days, you, know, you won't get that 10% you know, tax on it. Um, I'll tell you when they, you know, for women or widows, I think mostly widows, but um, when they tell you to keep that, you know, three months worth of of an emergency fund, that's what that's for. That's the kind of thing that's for. Because I had to take that. That kills me. I took that out of my 401k, but I have high hopes I can replace it in 60 days. But if I can't now, I've, I'm paying this tax. Yeah. So that is one probably big mistake that I made. I never put two and two together. Oh, well, now I'm paying $2,000 to use my own money. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I could regale you with so many mistakes, but that's the most recent one I just made. But I'll tell you, I learned and I will never make that mistake again. Never. Well, that's that's good a good lesson. And, and I know it is it it is challenging trying to you know understand all of these things. So um what you you talk about one of the things you you, you talk about is that um uh, I mean we're essentially becoming like uh, our own CEO, the CEO of our family. So um, how can women do that and, and really take a more active role in, in their finances? What, 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 would you, what would you recommend them to do? Well, I think there's two schools of thought. I think, um, you know, on one hand, if you're single, that's, that's easy. You're investing for yourself. You're doing this for yourself. But when we're talking about, and again, my sons are not little children. I mean, they have their own portfolios um, and they're invest, they invest their own money. They're really good already. But what I think right now I'm doing is trying to make them understand which was a lesson my late husband tried to teach me so many times. We really can't do that now. I never understood that, but I want this now. Why can't I have this now? Like I want, I'm that person. Like I want it now. Why can't I have it now? He said, well, we can't do that now. Uh, so I'm trying to impart to my sons, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to fly to Utah. I, I, although I do embrace Carpe Diem and I do embrace doing it while you're young. I have one, you know, of my, I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there. Uh, you know, you kind of, as CEO, you know, I'm no longer, you know, the cute mom in the background saying, oh, just let him, just let him go. You know, that's the mom's, oh, just let him go. Let him have fun. And the father's the one saying, well, that's ridiculous. You're teaching him like, you know, instant gratification and not everything in life is instant gratification. You, you have to work and then, you know, you get to enjoy the fruits of your labors. Life isn't a beer commercial, he used to say. Now I'm that person. The CEO has to be tough. The CEO has to say, no, I'm not buying you all snowboards for Christmas. I don't have that. You know, no, I'm not buying your lift tickets. If you want to go skiing, you buy your own lift tickets. No, I'm not. And you should probably 
And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you got to get your oil changed because if your car breaks down, I'm not buying any more vehicles. So now I'm kind of that. I'm not the soft nurturing mom I am sometimes, but I have to be him too. I have to be the one saying that car needs to last you for another however long. Do you know what a car payment means? And now my late husband would not be able to believe some of the things that have come out of my mouth. Get that oil changed. I'm yelling at them all. That's really important to get that oil changed, you know? So, you know, I would have to say as CEO, now, you know, you've got to be tougher. You've got to take that tougher stance. Yeah, absolutely. A little, a little tough love goes a long way and it's, and it's, and it's good for them because you're helping them to learn to become responsible adults because they're going to be getting jobs and they're going to have to be, you know, they're going to be living on their own. They're going to need to be able to manage uh, their finances and manage the money coming in and money coming out, which, um, leads me to something that I've also not not been very great at at doing is establishing a budget. Do you have uh, you had to do that now? And and what are what are some tips you've learned about about coming up with a budget, is, budget and keeping it in balance? I'm so glad you asked me that. And like I said, these are such timely questions because I'm going through all this right now. Um, you know, I have to now with you know being the ceo ceo doesn't use credit cards indiscriminately the ceo understands that's not just magic that's something you have to pay uh, you know and now i see i look at the credit card bills and i'm like okay i just paid this amount of money this amount of money for this credit card i just got charged 38 dollars, and now i'm starting to see that now the interest um so as far as establishing a budget what I've been trying to do now is pay myself first. That to me is the most important thing. When my um, paychecks go into my account, first I pay myself. That's the first thing I do. I put it into my account that's you know my nest egg. Um, and then I take out cash, not much, but I gas is so expensive now. You have to factor that in as well. In a million years, I wouldn't have done that when my husband was alive. Who cares about how much gas is? What do you mean it's this? Now I now I understand it takes me sixty dollars to fill my tank up. So I think okay, I need to do that twice a week. Let's say I have to do that. Not really though. Maybe uh, twice every ten days. Um, so I figure that into okay. It's like three hundred dollars maybe a month for gas, give or take fifty dollars. Uh, so that say that's two fifty between two fifty three hundred. Always have a little bit of of cash if you need it for whatever. No, I don't get to go coffee. I don't do any of that stuff. So I try to I try to get by on one hundred dollars. I know it sounds crazy, but I work a lot, so I'm not really unless I'm on vacation. But um, like a hundred dollars a week. And I try not to dip into my credit cards. I'm trying to to just use my cash and say this is once this is gone. OK, it's gone on Wednesday. Now you're waiting till Monday to get your other hundred dollars. So budgeting, I'll tell you, that is the toughest thing for me to really see. And now with groceries being expensive, uh, so expensive, everything's so expensive now. Uh, budgeting, I'm telling you, I'm still in a learning process with it. Um, but I'll tell you, it's a quick lesson. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I know you've got a, a your blog, and and I know you, one of the articles I think you put in there was some something about like twenty two tips to save money. Um, what's what's one of the or maybe a couple of tips you have found that have helped you to save money and that could help others as well? I'll give you one right now because I was just on the phone with him before this podcast, and um, he was so nice to me. When you're a widow you enter into conversations with utilities and cable and phone, you're already aggressive because it's so difficult, especially now because with COVID, they don't have a whole lot of people, live people. They, all they want you to do, you know, they want you to go into the automated or they want you to go online. Okay. It's very, very time consuming to get a a human being, but I got one. It took me 20 minutes, but I got them on the phone. So by then, I was already frustrated and he literally said to me, take a deep breath and calm down. I said, I don't under, okay. I said, I don't understand what this bill is. He's like, well, that's your, I said, I don't even own a landline anymore. So one of my tips would be to go into all of your bills 
Now, I've been paying Comcast blindly just because, okay, I know it's my first bill of the month. It's due on the second of every month. Let me pay my $126. I was all of a sudden, wait a minute, 153 Let me take a look at this. Why did it go up and what is it for? I have DirecTV and AT&T. And it turns out it's for my landline, which I gave my father who's on hospice. I gave him my landline phone, so I wouldn't even use the landline. So uh, one of the many tips, by the way, that was the great Dave Ramsey who helped me out with that article. I took that. I, I took a lot of those tips from him. One of my uh, uh, of many different is really look at those fees. See what you're paying for. I looked at it and I'm like, OK, I'm just paying Comcast. And now I'm like, no, I'm really going to look at these charges. I'm like remotes and boxes and landlines. So, you know, I'm going to now I don't know what day, but I'm going to go in in person and I'm going to bring the, the bill and they're going to hack at it until they take off everything i don't i mean we're talking we're probably talking about a good 60 dollars a month mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. oh only 60 bucks well, okay now multiply that by 12 now multiply that by 10 years and tell me that's something to sneeze at yeah those little teeny tiny fees really add up yeah well and as you mentioned that's that's a tank of gas for your car absolutely right absolutely yeah. Yeah, and and I know that you're you're absolutely right on that because I, I've 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 found that uh, in dealing with even like the um, the phone bill with your with your uh. mobile phone that I was I have T-Mobile and they have actually a program for seniors and so oh you know over fifty five and so I qualify that and so we were able to actually get onto that plan now instead of, especially because now my son has his own phone plan so he's not on ours anymore my daughter's yes. off of ours so we could actually start can't saving wait for that money. Day. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. so, so there are ways to do in fact and sometimes i think if even if you just call them because i know i used to do this even with the cable company too and just say you know hey is there anything you can do to like you know are there any specials or something going on right now that's what you have to do you have to really and again, you know, people work. I was, I'm lucky, you know, I'm a retired teacher, so I have a little bit more time. I don't have a whole lot of time, but you really have to tell yourself, especially right now, because everyone's hurting for, for, for um, employees. You have to say, I'm going to actually dedicate, you know, this much time to this because you go into AT&T, they're going to have you standing there. Getting my husband's name taken off that account was a nightmare. And then by the time I got his name taken off it, I was getting these astronomical bills. So I had to keep going back and forth. And then I got the teacher's education discount. Then they took off and there's all these little hidden fees that they put on there. I said, I could buy an Escalade for this bill. I said, I'm either going to get rid of our phones or you're going to get it down to something I can afford. It took a year. I'm not exaggerating of visits and phone calls, but I got it down so low. Uh, AT&T has to be mad. I'll tell you. Um, cause I, I almost cut it in half how much they were charging us. Nice. It, it, you have to be stubborn because mm -hmm. it's so much easier to say, I'm just going to give up and pay it. I don't have the time. I don't have the patience. It is. It's very, very, um, frustrating. Yeah. But if you put your time into it, you save a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now you mentioned that you have, you have a financial advisor that you talk to. So um, how has that been in, in dealing with that with, you know, investments? Because I think that's another, I actually went to a money conference with my husband a couple of years ago, and there was a whole, there was one whole session for women because women are just not, you know, it, we're I mean, not you know, it's probably like 80% men or who are investors and maybe, and probably even 20% might even be generous. So how is, yeah, what, what kind of, uh, how's that been your experience? And then what kind of advice do you have for, for women in that respect? Yeah. Um, when my husband died, our financial advisor was a friend of our family he also handles, um, all of, you know, my extended family. He is a family friend. I, uh, unfortunately, um, after the, the last four years, my portfolio has been performing okay. But again, I have only, it's been a very long journey into where I'm actually looking at the portfolio now. It was chaos for two years. Um, so these last two years I've been in, the, now I'm in the learning. But what I did was um, I, I did send him a letter and then we talked on the phone. I changed, I'm still with the same house but I, I just, I wanted to start fresh. I don't want someone who knew my husband knowing my finances. I don't want someone who handles my 
X and laws, money handling my money. So right now I'm in this complete, just changing over to my own people. Um, so I'm with the same financial house, but I'm uh, have a new advisor. Okay. So having said that, um, he knows now I don't, I can't speak for other women, but let's say a one out of 10, you know, a really well-informed woman is a five out of a 10 with financial literacy. I'd be at a two. I've risen. I'm probably at a three or four now, um, which is better than, you know, negative three that I was when he was alive. But, um, I'll tell you, I told him, he sent me a 10 page questionnaire and he says, we're not doing anything until you fill the whole thing out. And they really get very, it was the hardest thing other than publishing my first blog. Cause I'm very private. The hardest thing I've ever done was putting those numbers on paper mm-hmm. and showing him, this is who I am. This is what I've done. This is where I've screwed up and messed up. This is where I've overpaid. This is where I've over traveled. Um, I know I'm an idiot here and I'm an idiot there. I should have done this. I should, but you know what? It's in the past. Yep. The mistakes are in the past. And he took that document and he's like, well, you're a mess, but that's what I need. I need someone to tell me you're a mess, but we're going to get you back. And, you know, I'm going to help you. So we, um, zoom, uh, once every two weeks, I actually am meeting with him. I, I forget the days of the week now, Thursday, um, where we're going to discuss, whether I want to become more of an aggressive investor rather than moderate, which is where I am now. I want things to move a little quicker, but I also don't want to lose. And I have too much Apple. I need to get rid of some Apple. But um, again, as far as a financial advisor, he just came with the financial house. Um, I need him to treat me like, not like a husband, that's disrespectful to his wife. But I, I said, I need you to treat me like I'm your sister and be really tough with me. Cause that's what I need now. I need someone really taking me in hand and telling me this is where you can afford to do this and that and the other. So that's where I am with my financial advisor. Awesome. Well, yeah. that's, that's good that you're making progress and, and, and learning. Oh, it's Cause slow. It, yeah. <laughs> Boy, is it slow. That's hard. That's hard. Taking that long look at yourself in that financial mirror. I mean, my husband tried to get me to do that for 25 years and I blew him off and blew him off. He's like, okay, one day I'm not going to be here. I'm telling you one day I'm not going to be here and you're not going to know this. You're not going to, I'm like, oh yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Voila. <laughs> he was right. Mm-hmm. But I think he'd be proud of me. I mean, it's, but it is, what is it? The nece- necessity is the mother of invention. Is that, right. is that, yep. is that used correctly? So. I don't know. Yeah. I have no choice. I have to learn it now. So yeah. yeah. So, so what, what would you tell someone, you know, out there, what would you tell wives in particular, um, you know, what should they be doing? What should they be doing to making sure that they do protect themselves? Because in case they, you know, even if their husband, you know, maybe leaves them, you know, it could be divorce, doesn't have to be necessarily death. Right. So what, what would you recommend them to do? Start doing. Um, you know, it, it could be too, I, I'm not judging anybody. I've never understood women who don't work. I think it's, I think in this day and age, it is very dangerous to not have your own income and wait around till you're 60 for social security, but it might be too late for a lot of women. Um, but you know, my first advice would be be a career woman, have your own job, have your own income, have your own checkbook, have your own maybe even your own little portfolio. So what if you only put $20 in a month? I mean, I just wish I had, I I mean, I I did okay. uh, But I wish I had, I had contributed more to my, to my portfolio. So my, that would be my first kind of, it sounds judgmental. Not every, not every one, she, they want to stay home with their children. And that's wonderful too. Um, So I would say, especially for, let's consider a woman, what happens if her husband dies? I was, I would suggest you have him right. First of all, you get on him till he makes that will. You get on him till my husband died without a will. Uh, Oh, it was, it was the most stressful. Even now I'm, you like I said, I'm still trying to prove that, that he was who he is and I'm who I am. I don't care how (laughs) strong he is or how indefatigable he thinks he is, get him to make that will and put that in a safe deposit box. That's first even a living trust, all that stuff, get that done. Um, 
And I'm telling you, one day on a Sunday, if it's bad weather, sit down and you write down every single account number of every single account, every single password, um, and you keep that in, on a piece of paper somewhere, safe in your home so that when banking information, insurance papers, and have everything in file folders in a little filing cabinet, because if, you know, something happens to him, whether it's divorce or, or death, um, you have already cut your frustration by 80% know every single thing you have and he has what you share what you don't um because if you don't you are setting yourself up for a lot of aggravation yeah absolutely yeah. so well i'm sorry that you've had to go through all of that aggravation but again it was now, strengthening you yeah, know that's true yeah. yes and 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 again, I think even though you don't have daughters, but I think it's still good that your sons have been hopefully, you know, seeing what you've had to go through so that maybe they can then when they get involved with, you know, hopefully they can, you know, talk to their, you know, girlfriends and then wives possibly or Absolutely. spouses, whatever, and encourage them as well. And just say, this is what my mom went through. I don't want you to go through that. So yeah, you know what? I've been doing a lot of a lot of soul searching during these few years about financial finances and i keep trying to figure out where my mindset comes from that mindset of i whenever he would bring it up my mind would shut down again we had more fights about that than anything in our marriage and i have to tr they like i trace it back to your childhood i'm like well I mean, the only thing I ever experienced as a child was watching my father work. My mother was a housewife, but that was normal back then. The only thing I remember is that they, you know, they dressed me and hand me down clothes because they didn't, you know, they, they were saving money and they didn't want to put money out for clothes. So as soon as I got my first job, every penny went to clothes and makeup and shoes. I'm still battling that demon. I'm still battling not wanting to always spend my money on clothes and shoes and makeup. You know, you also have to trace back, women have to trace back to where they get their, their wealth or poverty mindset. Mm -hmm. Did you grow up in a household where you were, I, I didn't grow up in a household where I ever wanted for anything other than clothes. Uh, you know, it was an old intellectual household, but you all, you have to ask yourself that, you know, why am I like this, you know, and tr try to trace it back if you can, because as soon as you're cognizant of that, that's when you can begin to work from there. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah you, you can make that shift for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there anything else I should have asked you, but I haven't about this subject? Hmm. I, I mean, if, if, if we're talking again, um, being a college professor, I know right now student loans are at the forefront. Um, we're kind of engaged in, um, you know, a lot of different, uh, you know, things, things getting forgiven because he passed, things that, that were, were in the process of getting forgiven. Um, but this is more like, I guess, family advice. I'm sure every family has their own idea. But say a woman, you know, a woman becomes a widow and her children are young. Um, or, or, or in high school and enter, I'll tell you, um, don't get caught up in the student loan stuff. You know, I know it's hard. It's very easy to hit apply. It is. It's very easy. Okay. Congratulations. You know, you have this loan with this. I mean, you know, if you ha tell that kid to own it, you know, maybe my, my youngest just paid for one of his, he paid for his semester with his own money because he Excellent. worked over the summer Yay. let them pay for some of it let them pay mm -hmm. for their room let them own it the student loans aren't this kind of amalgamous thing just floating through it's like like it's not like you know like we say with credit cards at some point they're gonna be like oh by the way here you go you owe us you're like i do so you know i would say for women who like if, especially for widows or whatever I think widows are different than women that are divorced because they still have probably have a father or an ex-husband that is still, you know, participating in his children's lives. But when we're talking widows, um, it's very easy to kind of be seduced by that student loan thing. 
you know what? I teach community college. Tell them to go for the first two years, go to community college. Don't even, you know, if, if, if there's a woman who's a widow and she has a, 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 a child starting school, work for a year. Work for a year. You don't, have to, you don't have to start right away, eight weeks after, you know, you graduate from high school. Um, my, again, because we're involved in all of that now, things are working out, but you get caught up in that whole student loan thing. And, um, you know, that's, it gets, it gets tricky. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah. yeah, and I think that's regardless of even, even with, you know, two parents with, with income, because I know for our kids, like my daughter was accepted to all these lovely schools, uh, you know, including Notre Dame and, and then they offered uh, financial aid was like, um, I don't know, five, $5,000 a year. And the tuition was 55,000. So <laughs> needless to say, she didn't go to Notre Dame. Not Notre Dame, thanks <laughs> for the scraps. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and she, and she graduated like second in her class too. So it was, you know, crazy, but, yeah. um, but she went to a state school. She got a scholarship. She did have a finan- She did get one loan to help supplant. Yes. And then As my and then, youngest has very small. Right. And yeah, but it's and, com- when he when he graduates, it's completely doable. He has his own money. We'll be yeah. able to pay that off like that. Very small. It's OK exactly. to do small. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. And then and that's the thing I think is the is the lesson is they don't necessarily. And I think there's even been studies showing these, you know, these Ivy League schools, they don't necessarily really give you a better education than just you know, your state schools is depending yeah, on what type of there. degree that you're going for. So, you know, keep that in mind because yeah, these kids were saddled with hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine it. So yeah, both my kids, their loans are paid off now already. And that's a wonderful they, thing. And they did yeah, it themselves, which is yes, great. Yes. 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 Um, and I, but I will say, you know, my, my middle son, he's just the youngest twin. He went to Penn state. And I will say, though, he has this amazing job with this company, expense account and a car, and they put him up in hotels because he has to travel. And they wanted a Penn State kid. That is what they wanted. So I understand there is something to be said for what's on the resume. So I I would not downplay that. But some of these schools, they have some nerve charging what they charge just because it says Harvard or Yale or Princeton. But again, in other cases... Um, you know, it was between him and a kid that went to a community college. He got that job. So there, you know, we are thankful to Penn State for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, be- before we close out, uh, yeah. tell me a little bit about the blog that you have. So, because I mentioned that in the, in the intro. So, so what's that all about? Why did you start it? And, and, and what can people expect when they go there? Yeah, you know, I've been, I've been a journalist since I've been 22. I submit to many publications, but what I was finding um, in 2018 was I had all this, I needed to release. And I couldn't get, you know, when you wanna try to pitch to a magazine, they either don't answer you, you know, I needed a release. It doesn't matter to me if I have my my name, I've seen my name and byline so many times. I needed a release. So um, my, you know, a friend of mine said, you, oh, you, you know, you've gone around interviewing people your whole life. Why don't you tell your story now? Um, I'm intent. You can't tell, but I am intensely private and I am an introvert. Um, so publishing that first blog um, was terrifying. Um, and now I'll write about anything, but I've told my readers, chrysaliscollective.org, that's, I said, that's not my writing life. That to me is like you see an athlete stretching before a meet or you see someone, you know, a chef, you know, preparing something for the staff before he serves it to my blog takes me, I, I, I post Monday through Friday. It's like my warm up. I keep my, I keep everything, all the joints moving and oiled and everything running smoothly. And I, I amuse myself. Um, I only have a few hundred followers. I'm trying to change that, but it gets complicated and I'm not really, I don't like social, I'm not that interested in social media, but I, that's all we are now, you know, mm-hmm. but um, it's just, I post, I post funny things. I post things about widowhood, money, 
travel not so much now but hopefully we'll get back to that okay. um music fashion it's just fun it's something fun for me and my, my my followers enjoy it so hopefully i'm gaining steam but it takes a long time all right so yeah. so if someone wants to check it out say, say the name of that website again chrysaliscollective.org okay all right and i'll be sure i tried to find i tried to get the dot com but someone had bought it and then they try to sell it for like 10 grand they do that stuff now oh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i'll be sure and have that in the show notes so uh if you're listening to this uh go when you're somewhere where you can look it up again you can even you can also go to live love engage podcast.com and you'll be able to find the episode that's where you can see the show notes and you'll be able to get it there so well thank you so much for being with us today mary i i You've definitely shared a lot of great uh, information, you know, sharing your story and, and some of the, you know, the, the hard lessons that you've learned, but I'm sure it's going to help a lot of other uh, women out there in particular to help them. That's to, great. I hope so. Yeah. It's a journey. Again, every day is it's baby steps. Dave Ramsey's new book, Baby Steps to a Millionaire. Ah, <laughs> I'm not promoting him. I don't even know him. I just got it in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for being here and thank all of you for listening. I really do appreciate it that you are, uh, you know, checking out our podcast when we come out. And uh, if you are enjoying this, I hope that you will also make sure that you leave us a review wherever you listen to this podcast and uh, including uh, Spotify would be great. So until next time, as always, I encourage you to go out today and every day and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically. <laughs>